Remember, the United States pulled together a coalition of more than 50 nations, 50 nations to support Ukraine. We unified and expanded NATO. We can't walk away now. President Biden has announced some major sanctions against Russia, the largest since President Vladimir Putin's troops invaded Ukraine two years ago. So how is this going to impact the war going forward? Rebecca Castor has the latest. On the eve of a dark anniversary, two years since Russia's invasion of Ukraine began, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and other Democrats are in Ukraine to reassure President Zelensky that more aid is coming from the United States. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for your help. Ukraine has managed to reclaim over 50 percent of its territory captured by Russia, but now they're desperate for more soldiers and weapons. Zelensky telling Fox News the war won't end in Ukraine if they're unsuccessful. Putin will never stay, will never stop. He will go through Eastern Europe uh, because he wants it, because this is his goal. President Biden agrees and continues to urge Congress to pass the national security funding package that would send $60 billion to the war-torn country. Friday, he also announced more than 500 sanctions against Russia in response to the death of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. We in the United States are going to continue to ensure that Putin pays the price for his aggression abroad and repression at home. The sanctions target those connected to Navalny's imprisonment, as well as Russia's financial sector, defense industrial base, procurement networks, and sanctions evaders. It's a major step, but likely not enough to force a loss on the battlefield. Push. Putin back out of Ukraine, have him lose the war, and that would avenge Navalny's death better than any sanctions would. President Biden says the U.S. is also imposing export restrictions on nearly 100 entities, providing, quote, backdoor support for Russia's war machine. In Washington, Rebecca Castor, Fox 32 Chicago.